this week on Core Talk. Interning with the Corps wasn't even solely about just gaining technical skills in the field. It was really about understanding the broader impact. I think it's important for students to come to the Corps and realize that you'll be exposed to real world challenges. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We're a team of professionals, biologists, engineers, real estate and administrative specialists, lawyers, and many other specialties all working together to deliver engineering solutions that are vital to securing our nation, energizing our economy, and reducing disaster risks. Safely, on time, and within budget. This is Core Talk, the You Safe Norfolk District podcast. From harbor port deepening and coastal storm risk management to environmental restoration and research and development, we exist to serve our community because we are a part of it. Essayons. 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 Let us try. One of the great challenges in life is knowing enough about a subject to think that you're right, but not enough about a subject to know that you're wrong. Welcome to another episode of Core Talk. I'm James Walker. And I'm Major Tony Funkhauser. Bridging Futures, Facilitating Purpose is the title of today's podcast. That quote that I just mentioned a few moments ago is a quote that I've heard time and time again by Neil deGrasse Tyson over the last couple of years as he explains why certain technological advancements haven't been made yet. You know, stuff from science fiction mm-hmm. and you know stuff that we see on TV. And he says that that's due to the fact that we don't know enough about what we do not know in order to ask the right questions. Questions which could propel us forward technologically or in a more advantageous direction. He explains that we're too busy knowing what we already know, you know, using processes which give us results so effectively that it makes no sense in our mind to look in another direction. That being said, today we'll present to you a problem solver or a problem solver in the making who has been one of Norfolk District's most recent internship program participants, primarily to expose herself to what our STEM professionals do in order to strengthen or maybe to confirm her own understanding of the direction she wants to take professionally in her life. She and the other interns spent the last few months shadowing and learning from other engineering professionals here at the district, visiting the various civil engineering project sites as they work to provide effective engineering solutions for some of the Commonwealth and nation's toughest challenges. Yeah, that's right, James. And uh, we had three interns this summer as part of the program. It's a 10-week program between semesters. So excellent opportunity to have them on board. Um, But before we begin, I just wanted to give our listeners a little bit of background about this internship program and how it came to be and why it's so important. So not just what it provides to the Norfolk District, but to the USACE enterprise as a whole. I thought so as well, but let's whack and roll back to that at the end. I want to go ahead and let our guest tell her story, and because I think that's what's going to really resonate. Okay. That being said, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us about your background. Where and what are you studying? Absolutely. So my name is Sanaya Roberts-Dove. I'm a mechanical engineer technology major at Virginia State University. And what led me to picking this major, I would say, is I've always just had a really deep interest and curiosity for how things work, really, and how, like, you know, putting things together, what, what makes cars run, what makes planes run, what makes rocket ships run, you know? And so I really wanted to find a major that could kind of get me into a field where I was as close as I could be to that, you know, curiosity and goal without restricting myself into, you know, one specific field. And so, you know, I did my research and from what I understood, mechanical engineering would take me there. And so that's that's how I ended up in mechanical engineering. When you decided to to participate in this program, what kind of guided you to do that? And did you bring with you any expectations that were maybe confirmed or debunked as you were participating? What had made me pick this program was because before I graduated college, I had I had said that I want to get at least two interns under my belt. I wanted to intern with a government sector company and I wanted to intern with a private sector company. My family mostly works in the government sector. And so, you know, they've kind of always pushed that on, you know, it's a stable job. You get all the benefits, you know, (laughs) you'll have to try really hard to get fired kind of thing. And so but I also was like, I want to know what the private sector is like, too, as well. And so I went to um, a Virginia State career fair and I walked around, you know, I saw a lot of companies and we had, you know, Lockheed Martha. 
Lockheed Martin, I think Northrop. Drummond. Right? Yeah, yeah. And at the time I was a sophomore. So a lot of those bigger private sector companies kind of want you to have some of the harder classes under your belt. They want you to have done some projects, you know. And so I was, you know, I, I didn't really have that. And so then I spoke to um, Sharika, actually, yes, at the career fair. You know, I asked her about, you know, what the course really does. Because I, I mean, as far as I was concerned, I thought it was really going to be like 90 percent army personnel, maybe 10 percent civilian kind of thing. That's a common misconception with the Corps of Engineers. Yes. Yeah, you think it's a lot of green suitors. Yes. And I think we, we've talked about that in previous podcasts. But yeah, no, understandable. Yes. And so I was that was just my impression. You know, she told me she was like, you know, it's a lot. Di- it's a lot different than that. And, you know, she told me about how y'all do some civil works and how y'all, you know, kind of help maintain the communities surrounding you guys. And so. I had never really considered that as what the cores did as well as what I could do. And so I was like, you know, it sounds like a door to open. And that, that's how I ended up here. And for those listening, those who don't know, Sharika is our Norfolk District Workforce Management Specialist. You may have heard her on episode five of Core Talk as she introduced the district's recruitment efforts and the opportunities for both students and recent graduates. You made some comments about understanding all the work that we do here within the Hampton Roads, and I know, are, are you, you're from this area originally? Yes, I'm from Hampton Roads. Yeah, so, I mean, this is like the perfect location when you're talking about things. I mean, that we try to highlight that a lot during all of our episodes, is that we also live here, so it's very important to us with the projects that we have in this organization because it impacts our livelihoods as well. Um, so I'm glad that you got to see that while you were here um, and see all the things that were, were impacted within the Hampton Roads. And I, I don't know if it's if any specific projects or, th- or things that you worked on were here that kind of had more of an impact or significance to you than others, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Absolutely. So I would say when we had our visit to the New York RGM conference, that was definitely what I would, I would say that was the most impactful for me because that conference was like, it was the first time I had the opportunity to sit in a room of, of really impactful people. You know, there were high ranking military officers. There were, you know, civilians of equivalent GS rankings, you know, the GS 14s, the GS 15s. And they really wanted to hear what we had to say. And that was, you know, shocking to me because, of course, I'm kind of in the room like, you know, I'm not really supposed to be here. I'm going to try to not <laughs> step on anybody's toes or anything. But I would just say it was super impactful, both personally and professionally, because not only was it an opportunity for me to sit and listen to see what goes on in these meetings, but it was also a really good networking opportunity to get to know people that took similar career paths to me and what choices they made that got them into a slightly different position than the one I'm pursuing. And so I was able to, you know, ask them questions and and get real insight as to what they do with the course. But it was also a really good confidence booster, just knowing that, you know, I had their attention, even if it was only for, you know, four or five minutes, but it, it felt like they were genuinely interested in what I had to say and bring to the table. And yeah, so that was a, a really good experience. I loved it. Oh, that's awesome. I know the internship program that you guys are participating in is definitely high on uh, General Lloyd's priority list. I know it's high on Uh, the Norfolk District's priority list. So it's really good that you got that opportunity to talk to them because it is a growing program. It's continuing to expand in the area. So it was really nice to to have you guys be able to do that. And and now you have a leg up on me because I have not been to an RGM. Um, So so within 10 weeks, uh, you've been to a higher level meeting than me. So kudos to you. To me, interning with the Corps wasn't even solely about just gaining technical skills in the field. It was really about understanding like, the broader impact of what you work on as an engineer and how that affects people in the communities, not just, you know, big corporations and, you know, things like that. I think it's important for students to come to the core and realize that you'll be exposed to real world challenges. You'll you'll learn how engineering intersects with public policy and, you know, environmental factors and in raising and building up the community. It's it's a great chance to work with professionals who are just really passionate in their fields. And I think and I think that really separates you guys also from 
a lot of other companies because the people I met here were so passionate that they, they they knew everything I had to ask about anything because that was their that was what they they do that was their thing and so I think that's something it's hard to find anywhere else you know I was able to to really just gain a lot of insight and experience that I could not find in the classroom. So I think if, if, if you're serious about engineering, this is a great opportunity just to get a better understanding of what, of how engineers actually directly impact the community. Pulling on that thread a little bit, kind of like, can you just like give a couple of examples from your conversations that it's like, oh, that, that's a great nugget of information that I'm going to continue to take with me. Do you have any examples like that where, you know, you were having these conversations or you were seeing a project and you're able to now you, you, you put into practice what you've been learning the last couple of years, right? So now you're like, oh, now I put it into application right. and I've seen it in application and now it makes more sense when I'm going back into my next level of classes as I'm understanding things. Do you have any, did you have any examples like that or see anything like that while you were here that you're kind of bringing back to school? To me, a lot of students now aren't really picking a major that they're passionate in, you know, they're, they're picking a major that they just feel like is gonna bring them the most revenue. Talking to so many of the core employees and, you know, seeing that they've been interested in what they do for so long, kind of confirmed for me that I can also do that, you know? Cause I, I had also, I was also worried as, as I grew up that I would be stuck in a job where I wasn't really passionate, I was just there. And that was like, you know, I feel like that's such a fast way to kill creativity, you know, and and I didn't want that for me. So it was just like meeting everybody was kind of like a sigh of relief, almost like, OK, there are people who are doing what they want to do in life and, and they're still maintaining their way of living. So, yeah, it was an eye opener. And I definitely think I can bring that back to the classroom. Thank you for participating with us. It's been um, awesome to have you, Taylor, uh, and Chevelle here uh, over the last 10 weeks. I know I didn't get to have direct interaction with you guys uh, on a daily basis, but I know that the impacts and the support that you provided to the district uh, was extraordinary. Um, you know, thank you for participating in the change command that we had in July. Um, it was great to have you on board for that. Uh, and, and I'm glad that you were able to see the breadth of what the Norfolk District programs are, are are providing here to the Hampton Roads and the Commonwealth of Virginia. The relationship that we have with uh, Advancing Minorities in Engineering, or AMI, uh, is a great partnership, and I'm glad that, that it was started um, to support um, individuals like you, Sanaya. Um, you know, it was a, non, a nonprofit organization that was uh, developed to support the um, historically black college and universities, um, and we're fortunate here that we have many in the Hampton Roads area. Um, so it's it's just it's an excellent opportunity, and Sharika is really good at being able she to is. network and and pull resources to support our internship programs and finding folks like Shania. So it, and it perfectly aligns with our goals uh, of maintaining diversity in the workforce, and it just helps drive all the things that we're doing in the Norfolk District. And like you said, sir, I think that it, what makes the partnership very unique is that it serves the district, but also the community. And exactly right, and I I think you know. So now I, I said it to you when we gave you a certificate of appreciation. I really hope that you want to come back to the district. Um, I know that's a big goal for us is to ensure that our interns that we're bringing on are, are being onboarded in the future. So, you know, it, it's out there. If you want to come back, just let us know and, and we'll work with, uh, with our team to, to find you a right fit that continues to drive your passion. So I really appreciate um, everything that you did for us here and uh, you know hopefully we get to keep in touch thank you for sharing your experience and insights with us today absolutely thank you guys for having me and I'm, I'll definitely keep that door open I'm I'm honestly in, interested in interning with maybe one of the Europe districts um, in one of these summers I, I think that's kind of awesome take advantage of that Europe's a beautiful uh, area yeah <laughs> you know thanks again uh, you know thanks James for putting this together if you are interested for the listeners out there you know, we're doing this again next summer. So Sharika is going to be reaching out to a bunch of the upcoming career fairs with the HBCUs. I know she's got Virginia State, Norfolk State. Um, she's got uh, North Carolina A&T lined up. That's a very hard one to get into. So lots of opportunities if you're interested. So just reach out to Sharika, a Wanamaker, and we'd love to have you on the team as part of this internship program. Thanks for tuning in to the Core Talk podcast. 
please like, share, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this conversation and found the information to be interesting or useful. Your feedback matters. Remember to comment with any ideas or questions you may have regarding U.S. Army Corps of Engineers projects within your community. Episodes come out the first Wednesday of every month. Until next time.